Now, moving along into our second half, which is stressing into the importance of prostate cancer. The first study we have here is piece three, questioning the role of radium-223 with enzalutamide. Petros, can you please walk us through the study and its findings here? This is a patient population that might not be that common in the, in the modern era in our practices. As you see in the yellow box on the left, these are patients with metastatic CRPC uh, who were uh, asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, ECOG-PS0-1, uh, and they had no prior treatment with enzalutamide uh, and no visceral metastasis and have ongoing aid androgen deprivation. Uh, the big question is, uh, in, in you see the breakdown of the patient characteristics, very few patients, I would say minimal number of patients, had exposure to prior abiraturan. So a prior anti-androgen. So uh, the uh, the big question here is how applicable are the data uh, to the modern era population, where the at least in the U.S. The vast, and, and probably in Europe as well, in other places of the world, a significant proportion of patients receive a novel anti-androgen in the hormone-sensitive metastatic setting. So I think the applicability of this data is a major challenge. Um, and this trial randomized patients to ENZ alone or ENZ plus radium-223. Uh, primary endpoint was radiographic progression-free survival with many secondary endpoints, as you're showing. And the data showed that the primary endpoint was met. There was benefit uh, with uh, uh, the combination ENZ plus radium-223 versus ENZ alone in terms of radiographic PFS, and there was a, a trend towards benefit for overall survival. Hazard ratio is 0 0.69 for OS. However, because the uh, two cares cross over, there was loss of the proportional hazards uh, model, so they need to follow these curves longer. The question is, what do you do in practice? I think, as I mentioned before, it's hard to find these patients with no exposure to prior novel antiandrogen. I think someone can argue if you want to, if you have a very rare patient for whatever reason has no exposure to prior uh, uh, novel antiandrogen, the data is reasonable for the combination of ENZA plus radium if you feed the population of bone mets, uh, uh, usually symptomatic bone mets, and no visceral metastasis. So it will be a very niche. A population of patients that the data will be applicable to. And as I mentioned, radium has a role also as monotherapy as well. So it's good to see that uh, and kind of revive our enthusiasm about this drug. I think one thing to uh, bring up is if you're going to use radium-223 and novel androgen therapy, make sure to you, uh, make sure to use remodifying bone reagents as well here because the risk of pathological fracture increases when you're combining these two things. And Petros, you brought up sequencing, you brought up what to do if you've been exposed to novel hormonal therapy already. That actually takes us to the next study as well, 